to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with... Elizabeth Helley. And... Tyler Hamilton. And we have, uh, we are on the last film of An American Tale. Um, we'll be talking about American Tale, The Mystery of the Night Monster. Film four. You guys ready to dive in? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, let's find this night monster. All right, we're going on a hunt for the (laughs) night monster monster. right now. Fievel's back. (sighs) And he's made some new friends, including newspaper reporter Nellie Bree. That's my byline. You're fearless. Uh, No, Fievel. Only fools are fearless. They're on the case of the Manhattan night monster. Let's you and I go shed a little light on this monster. Now, Fievel must set out to find his courage. Ugh. I've never been so scared in my whole life. And face his fears. Run him down! As he leads the way through his most exciting adventure yet. Filled with songs. Everyone's afraid at times. But if you use your wits, you'll find what once was scary is real. Featuring Fievel, Tanya. <sighs> Things could not get any worse. Tiger. Okay. So, what'd you guys think of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, Let's get right to it. The, the first thing that I kind of noticed is that, like, it, it, it weirdly, in like the first ten minutes, it has like a commercial break type, like fade out type thing. Oh yeah, there was like the there was like a part where it like went boom. <laughs> so like, but there was like, just a circle. You know? That was overall uh, uh, a way. <laughs> pared down animation style and it almost felt like we said this before that it felt like Saturday morning cartoonish this very very yeah. much felt that let's, but I actually don't think it was that big of a detriment to the movie this time around yeah, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say what let's just give everybody a little bit of background this mm-hmm. is again directed by the same exact guy as the last film mm-hmm. and it's the same type of Saturday morning same cartoon. music uh, but the the <laughs> animation did actually seem to get worse even from the third film yes so <laughs> yeah. uh yeah. yeah. Oh, we should also say this is the fourth and final. Yes. So final. far. Yeah. I mean, this one came out in 1999, so... Yeah. Yeah. Straight to DVD. Damn. Or VHS, whichever one it was. I really think... Did, did it originally come out only in Germany? Yeah, that's what it said. It was originally released in Germany. I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> and, then, and then it was released in 2000 in America. Okay. <laughs> where it takes place. <laughs> so, at the beginning of this movie, we are back in... Uh, New York. Yeah, um, Fievel Goes West. Still just a yeah. dream. Still just a dream. Um, and speaking of dreams, Fievel is in the middle of one crazy drug trip right at the beginning of this movie. It's <laughs> fucking nuts. <laughs> Sa- Satan Cat is chasing him in the dream, and it is Yeah, like the horrifying. gates of hell open up yeah. on the floor, and this crazy it's, fire demon. It's one of the things where like they can't afford like crazy backgrounds, so they just start using these abstract colors, like these kind of Steve Ditko like matte paintings in the back. Yeah. And... and because of it, I don't think it was by design, it makes it way more creepier. Like, it looks like a Ralph Bakshi, like, nightmare. It was pretty creepy, actually. Yeah. Like, it's this, like, cat monster that's made out of, like, electrical fire. And then he has, like, a mouse trap at the tip of, of his, his tongue. tongue. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> a little weird. A little weird. That, that's, that, that's what a mouse nightmare would look like. Yeah. We get a little peek into what his, um, Falva Goes West dream might have looked like in the previous film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, so he kind of wakes up from that and is freaking out, and and uh, we learn pretty quickly that there's this night monster, and there's a mystery around what it is. It is yeah. <laughs> they make a point to say, like, it's certainly not cats, because... We've we got- built a wall, well, you guys! Yeah, 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 yes, we <laughs> built a wall. Cats cannot ever enter... Here. So yeah, since Without the a passport. since the end of the third movie, they built a, like a mouse colony with a big wall around it. Um, Papa, I don't think is working at the factory any longer. He's no longer a labor leader, from I, what they've said. Yeah, I would actually like to put forth an interpretation that this film also retcons a previous film, and the, the previous film didn't happen. Either. I agree. So this is after the first film, you yes. think? No, this. I'm just saying, like, like the like. Um, what was the last one even called? I can't. It's, Manhattan Island. Yeah, the Treasure, the Manhattan treasure of Manhattan, Manhattan Island. Island. Yep. <laughs> uh, like that film deleted the events of Five of Goes West, I think that this film deletes the events of 
uh, Manhattan Island. Because... I absolutely agree. Right in the beginning, um, Papa is reading the the Daily Nibbler, which is what their newspaper is called, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, and he goes off about this story by um, Nellie Bree, mm-hmm. who's like one of the main characters in the film. And it sounds awfully similar to what happened in the previous film. Oh, really? <laughs> Where yeah. she goes yeah. in, totally she's that. like, did you hear the... Or he says, did you read her story about the horrible working conditions in that clothing factory? <laughs> the mice there were working without food or anything. And, and she went in there and broke it up and everything. And I know that this isn't obvi- obviously like the exact same thing that, but as... Um, sorry, the exact same thing as him going... Uh, Fievel going, I had a dream about the West... But it kind of is so similar that it's, I'm like, no, no, it's, no, no, it's no, that, yes. but it's not a wink. But like in my mind, I was just like, oh, just give it a rest, dude. You're right. <laughs> it's, it's, total, it's totally also, not. It's not. Okay. Also, so. there's so many things that like don't follow continuity from the previous yeah. film. Tiger's not the sheriff. There's a wall. There's no mention of you know. They they mentioned in that article too that they kicked out the rats that own the factory. <laughs> so it's like the same fucking thing. Yeah, I don't think that that's why they said that, but I can see why you would say that. But so Nellie Bree is based on the famous journalist Nellie Bly, who is super like a big deal in the history of journalism and uh, U.S. history. She went undercover in factories and uh, the asylums of the day, and also did like a around the world in eighty days type thing and uh, exposed the horrible working conditions and brought about that change. And so that's what she's based on. Right. Um, which I was very excited about, but, um, the whole reason that they're even talking about this chick is because Tanya apparently has a job now at the newspaper. Um, I think they're all older. They're a little older. I think Tanya's obviously older. Five kind of looks the same, but the baby also looks older. So I don't know why she can have a child job, but let's say it's an internship. Maybe I I mean, no one's character has changed more over the course of these movies than Tanya. Tanya. It's just like I don't know, like fucking whatever she needs to be for the plot. Like uh, last movie, she was like an annoyance. Now she's like she was a singer. Like yeah, (laughs) Yeah. there's like it's 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 always changed. Disheartening. So Tony got her a job at the newspaper. He's like a newsboy, but she's like for some reason interning for the chief, and she's in love with him. She's interning for Read Daily, <laughs> the newspaper <laughs> chief. Oh, wait, okay, I didn't catch that at all. <laughs> I was like, first of all, his name. She she says like, oh, Mister Daily, and it's called the Daily Nibbler, even though like the name just spelled differently. Right, but still, his name is. Reed and then Daly. later on in the movie, they're like, his name is Read Daily. So yeah, after Nellie Bly <laughs> being <damn> and <laughs> being a reference to an actual person, I was like. Oh wait, wh- who is this a re- real reference to? And I started thinking about, it, and then I'm like, oh wait, no, it's just J. 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 Jonah Jameson. Yeah, yeah <laughs> not even that really. But... I wanted it to be like a Pulitzer or a Hearst reference, <laughs> yeah. but it was not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Tanya's got a job, and she is forced to take Fievel there for some. For reason. like, it's the most like ham fisted like so because, weird. because the plot wants it yeah. to. Like, Mama is like, oh, you need to take Fievel to work today. And I was like, yeah. no, like, I, I can't. Like, it's a, it's my job. It's a and, real job. Yeah, and then okay. she's like, but who got you the job? Tony. And he's like, and, then, and who's friends Tony? <laughs> Fievel. <laughs> then, okay, then. You gotta take him to the newspaper. Yeah, yeah pretty much. T- take your little brother to work day uh, for That's Tanya. That's totally a thing. And um, it, <laughs> everyone's freaking out about this night monster. Uh, well, uh, Nelly is like everyone's freaking out about it. Nelly's like, it's that's fake news. Like, let's let's do the real stories. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but even Reed, though she was also investigating something that turned out to not be true, right. <laughs> but she tried. She but, tried. <laughs> but Reed's all you know going hearst and being like, no, it sells the papers. Like, we need the night monster. Yeah. Can we talk about? Can we like rewind for a second about this wall? They yeah, no, it's, it's insane. Like, so yeah, like when they have to get into town, like uh, they go through this this kind of crazy adventure with Five Hole and Tanya, and they get to like this Berlin Wall like check center, and the guy's like, "Oh, well, like I have to inform you that we're in a state of emergency." Yeah, <laughs> he's like pursuant to uh, authority three four five six, and then just like, has all these different like yeah. bureaucratic stamps, and it's yeah. like, "Oh shit!" They need like, like a passport. Just yeah, go outside. Passport, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, it was pretty crazy. And then it turned out that Nelly was like the gate operator for some reason. Yeah. She was she, she was, was undercover. Undercover. Yeah, Back based on the Black real Mule. the real Nelly boy. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so Tony comes and he shares. He's trying to become a reporter instead of just a newsboy, and so he shares that uh, <laughs> one of the in Ch- in mice Chinatown, there's been an attack with a night monster. And Reed Daly suggested headline, and I wrote this down because oh, yeah, he, he he wants the headline to be. Fortune cookie crumbles for Chinese mouse. And, and, then, and then I think, oh I think, God! I think when it cuts there, it's like a. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that happens. Yeah, yeah. But thankfully, Nelly is like absolutely not. <laughs> they they go and investigate. I mean, to be fair, it is like it, it's something that I'm shocked that they carried it over through all the movies. That the human world is still present in these things, and mm-hmm. so Mouse Chinatown, just like the Mouse Library and the Mouse Newspaper Office, is underneath real people Chinatown. <laughs> yeah, it's like so. It's like up, oh, like humans have a Chinatown. Like, but although the character designs, yeah, the mice also are, talk uh, like. I mean, yeah, <laughs> talk like real racist. It was <laughs> horrific. Like. I was totally down with the movie until, and then it, we get to this scene with the racist mice, and I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god, like, they have slanty eyes, and they speak broken English, Yeah, I was and, like, oh, I'm hearing lots of R's for L's. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> just, <laughs> it's so <laughs> overboard, oh, but, um... It, it is crazy, though, I mean, like, of, of it's something that all of these movies have, have had some yeah. form of racial insensitivity. Yeah, yeah. Where, where the first movie with the No Cats in America song, where it's just like... Stereotypes are fun, right? Yeah. Like, let's get this Italian song happening. But I didn't know, realize that this was the same director as the last one, but as soon as they started talking about journalistic integrity <laughs> within the first eight minutes of this children's movie, I was like, well, this has to be the same lefty bastard who wrote the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so It's stoked. not quite as overhanded no, as... No, the, no, no, like, no, but I was just like, like, shit, like, we're, we're, now we're talking about this, I guess. Yeah, yeah I was really excited, but um, we have skipped over, they sang the first song at the 16 minute mark. Which is a song about getting the facts and having journalistic integrity. Which I think is the best song in the film. It was an I amazing agree. song. I mean, I thought it was actually kind of good. I was like, oh, okay, well, I yeah, I was surprised that I was like, oh, like this I, still I, a musical. Better, better song. The last one had one song, right? Yeah, it like no, three, it had three songs, three or four. Too. Yeah. But this one, like, did it. Yeah, <laughs> this one, this one, like the vocals sounded like they were better recorded yes. than the previous film, and I did kind of like, I was like watching the movie. And it was so far in, like you said, 16 minutes. So yeah. I was, like when it started happening, I was like, oh, wow, okay, it's still a musical. Yeah. I was kind of thinking it wasn't going to be a musical. The, the one thing I did think of when, like, when the, the music, the backing came in behind it, I started, was like, was Garage Band out in 1999? Because this kind of <laughs> sounds like they did this in Garage Band. Yeah, it wasn't like overly orchestral, but at least the singing was good. Yes. And I uh, thought the lyrics were really clever. It had a lot of journalism yeah. puns and things that were kind of yeah. clever wordplay. I, I think, I think it's, if, if, it had, if it had the budget and like, and they got the full orchestration, it would be a fantastic song. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we got that song, Racist Mice, and then we are introduced to... <laughs> Racist Mice! <laughs> We're you, introduced well, to our villain. This is, the, is this the only one that doesn't make have Native American jokes in it? I think that it might be. Yeah, it replaces them with the Chinese jokes. That's right. Yeah. But, but at least the, the, the Chinese mice kind of like are there and then they go away. But you get to go... <laughs> yeah, just sweep those poor <laughs> attacked immigrants well, like, under the rug. I was like, at least they're not like throughout the film being like... yeah. Whatever they were saying. <laughs> I don't even want to repeat it. it was, yeah, it was... Yeah. Um, but, like, at least, you know, we, we go to the scene in Chinatown and we learn that, like, you know, there is something actually happening because there's this huge hole in the ground and, like, her husband got taken. Her husband is mm-hmm. gone. The Chinese... Mr. Chinese Mouse is gone. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we meet um, who will eventually become our villain, this uh, poodle that kind of looks like a rat with a piece of coral on its head, but it's apparently a poodle. Um, named Madame Mousset. Yeah, uh, I couldn't, Mousy. I couldn't Mousy. understand what they were saying until later on in the film. Yes. I kept going like, ah, oh, she's a I had the like captions this. on, so. Um, oh, smart, smart. She <laughs> is uh, basically driving up scare tactics, doing fake fortune telling stuff, selling fake uh, monster repellent. Yeah, she, she shows up at every attack. Yeah, and goes like, buy my monster pouches. Yeah. It's... Something like Pretty that. Pretty heinous. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of just meet her, and then uh, she, Nellie Bree, is antagonizing her. Yeah. And so she considers her an enemy from there on I was going to say that um, Nellie Bree is my favorite new character in this film. Absolutely. Because she's so, like, no-nonsense, and everyone's like, I'm scared of the monster! And she's like, oh... 
Oh, we, like, we, don't we, think about we that. Leave, we did leave out the part where, uh, to investigate this murder, oh, Reed, da- Reed Daly yeah. says, hey, bring that eight-year-old with you, because it's five little drum and doodle. <laughs> yeah. Inside, uh, and so, like, he's he's there to be, like, the sketch, like, the criminal sketch yeah. artist. And Rem- Rembrandt. He yeah. starts getting, like, overworked, and yet they're still, like, <laughs> send him out with the reporter. Well, yeah, like, his, he- his shitty sketches get published <laughs> in the newspaper. He draws, like, a three-headed hydra, right. and, like, well, they no, print it in the paper. It's, it's another vehicle for racism, because <laughs> it, it all totally is. Yeah, like, like we'll, get, we'll get to what he draws later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the reason that he wanted to, to get to the newspaper in the first place is because he wanted to talk to Nellie about his dream. Well, so that he, so that she, her courage would make him be like not afraid. Or he couldn't sleep. Uh, he kept waking up, waking up the family, and so Mama was like, "Hey, go ask the reporter directly if it's true or not." So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I wish we could all do that. And the, the the movie needed to keep him tired so that he would keep having nightmares. Is what was happening? Because <laughs> he has like he has keeps having these like he really horrible does. flashbacks. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Every time oh. someone was like, "The monster looks like this," so it's like, "Oh, the monster!" There's monsters. another. He after they meet the villain, he's got another dream nightmare. Like it's a montage of his nightmares and then of him going right. to all the yeah. crime scenes. Animation is expensive, and Gotta it, reuse that. They basically <laughs> Fievel's dream parodies like this really famous Battleship Potemkin mm-hmm. steps of Odessa with the pram or the stroller yep. going down the steps, <laughs> and I was like, I cannot believe they're doing this right now. Like, I yeah, and so he uh, he dreams that Yasha is like going down. Wait, the- you can't believe that. Again, I'm going to say it, the lefty bastard who made the children's movie about workers' rights and journalist integrity didn't go to film school. Like, yeah, that's absolutely true. Did. That's true. But it's yeah. just hilarious that of all things. Yeah. Uh, because all of that, um, you know, communist uprising, workers' rights stuff, that was the last movie. But they're like, oh, let's let's put it well, in the stroller. It's funny how that's like, it's, it happens in 1990, like this, 1999, right? Like, The Simpsons did that bit, like, a decade before that. Sure, movie. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's let's not like, oh, a, let's do it in a child's film. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not like you're treading new ground or doing anything interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, uh, and then he wakes up from that dream, uh, having fallen asleep in a bowl of soup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, just, which, <laughs> you could die. Yeah. I and, wonder and, if and Leon just, would think that you would drown just, in that Yeah, no, Leon would absolutely <laughs> think that, 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 like, no, he'd think you'd survive. Yeah. But like, the, like, the, Papa Maskowitz is like, so nonplussed by it. He's like, you fell asleep in your soup. Like, so yeah, he's like, like yeah, ma- sh- yeah, Mama yeah. was like, he could have drowned, and Papa was like, it was a shallow bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that line. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Pretty messy. Um, so they continue to go to different crime scenes. We've got a Scottish store owner, and all of his things are about What Nessie. do you guys think his name was? <laughs> Mr. Haggis. Mickey Mouse. Mr. Haggis. <laughs> and uh, he was actually voiced by the same guy doing a Scottish accent that was the Scottish accented uh, police chief in the third movie. Oh. So. The one on who, him. The one who Brutally, cracked heads? Yes, yeah. that guy. <laughs> the Italian mouse was called Mr. Noodles and the, yeah. so, <laughs> the British mouse was called Mr. Crumpet. Or something. <laughs> At some point. That's basically how they're naming yes. mice now. Yeah. <laughs> Tony and Nelly and Fievel and everybody get together to discuss all the evidence they've compiled and we see all of Fievel's drawings of mm-hmm, the different mm-hmm. crime scenes. And Reed Daly is like, they're all different. This is crap. And Nelly points <laughs> out, no, actually, he just drew what the people told him. He just drew several different types of racial stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, the Chinese person described a dragon, and the Scottish guy described Loch Ness Monster, and the Greek yeah, yeah. people described a hydra. And I, I don't that, even, it, I don't know how I many I wrote that down, too. I was like, Mr. Haggis was referencing the Loch Ness, Loch Ness Monster within, like, five seconds of opening his <laughs> I mean, to be <laughs> it was fair, pretty messed up. Okay? To be fair, <laughs> if an American tale has always been an immigrant's tale, and they're wanting to show the melting pot and doing these things, and so yeah. they kept that, they keep that theme consistent across all of them. I appreciate that, <laughs> but you but... think they, you think they would have gotten better at it at this point? <laughs> yeah, it's just you're like I, I know heavy handed stereotypes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Just... Haggis, the Scottish mouse. <laughs> <laughs> like, so on. we gotta we gotta. <laughs> So um, Nelly and Fievel decide to continue investigating, but we then we get a cut to the villain sort of. We're gonna, re- you know, exposition. We're gonna reveal our plot, and this poodle, Madame Mousset, uh, sings a song with all these cats that she's apparently controlling. 
Um, and of course, it's a tango because it's an evil song. So <laughs> but it needs to be right. a tango. And yeah. It's very strange because <laughs> some of the very important points of the song are in French and never translated. I couldn't so, tell like, what she was saying, yeah. though, honestly. I watched it with subtitles. So the song is called uh, The Creature de la Nuit, which is, you know, yeah, the creature of the what night. I couldn't understand but what why would saying. any kids understand that that means of the night? Because, yeah. because Muzzy. Uh-huh. You guys didn't have those Muzzy tapes? No, I don't, or, I don't even I don't know what you're talking, you're talking about. about. It was like it was like a commercial like on Nickelodeon, and it was like like buy these two hundred dollar VHS tapes where like they'll teach your kids like French, oh. and it was like an educational like English French language. Never mind. All right. <laughs> that wasn't universal. Like, <laughs> yeah, I watched Nickelodeon. I don't remember that. I don't yeah, know. we had them. Anyway, does it line up with the timeline though? With Muzzy? No, with the American Tale timeline. <laughs> When did the when did those tapes come out? I don't even know. Would the children understand because of Muzzy? So it's like the main the main hook of the song is not in English and not really a um uh, what are the words? It's not a cognate either. So how would you like know yeah. that that means of the night? But it's anyway. just like generic. I'm a bad guy song. And all, like, basically, she's getting across the fact that all these, she's controlling these cats. Right. And so her the plan, plan uh, oh yeah, yeah, the plan is to kidnap all the mice. It's basically like well, a, we learn we learn the full scope of the plan not till later in the movie. I feel uh, like. okay. yeah, we just might as well talk. When about the, well, I know. I'm just saying, like, like I was like, okay, she's helping the cats like get through the wall, but then you learn that like. They're going to keep all the mice to sell them as food to the other cats. Yeah, which is... And the only thing she gets out of it, I guess, is, like, selling She doesn't her. like mice. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the whole plot... Oh, it's, like, yeah. it's like a human trafficking plot. Yeah. Like, yeah, where it's, they... Yeah, it's But she's, it's she sells dark. her pouches or whatever. Yeah, so, by the way, she calls her plan the ultimate solution. I know! Which is just, like... I was, I was like, the final solution? Uh, yeah. Like, like, it was... Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like, she's like, all thanks to my ultimate solution. <laughs> we noticed that she was on. Yeah. Yeah. Mouse. So then her plan Mousy. is to get Tony to give uh Nelly a fake tip and then she's gonna kill Nelly. Uh it does not work because then Tony well he does give her the fake tip, but then he saves them by crashing a chandelier on top of Tony, the Tony didn't know machine. Fake tip, right? No, he didn't know. Yeah. No, he just uh, wanted to go along. Because Tony so like, Tony's whole shtick in this is like, I'm a newsy, like I hear things on the street. Like <laughs> yeah. he's yeah. carrying the banner. Yeah. Um so yeah, they so go we, to some old house and they get attacked by the machine, right. and then Tony saves them by dropping the chandelier. Like the we finally get of the to opera. see what is going on with this monster. It's some sort of like crazy spinning thing that has like this LED it's, cat face. It's kind of like the secret weapon. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a little bit lot worse. worse. Yeah. What is the thing that spins in the? It's picture? just a light oh, that shines. It's uh, called a. It, it was in one of those oh, horror yeah, movies yeah. that we saw too. It's like you look into it and, and they have it them at Disneyland. What is the official? Like, yeah. yeah, I tried to look it up and I couldn't remember. It's like a zoetrope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a zoetrope on the top, and then it's got like Thanks. circular saws. Thanks, Coppola, got it. <laughs> <laughs> it has circular saws for hands, which is a little bit terrifying. Yeah. Um so yeah, then uh, but, it, but but it looks like a really chintzy version of the secret weapon. Yes, as well, far as there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no 3D to it. And it's, yeah, it's at a point where 3D was much more. It's available essentially a cart. Yeah, it's a cart that animation. they push. One, the big cat pushes, and the other cats move levers. I guess to like control the saws. I don't know. Yeah, pretty stupid. So <laughs> I'm not sure why, but I forget why. But Nelly and them decide to go enlist the help of the dogs to find out if they have any information. Oh, I guess because she's a poodle, so they're like, "Let's and go the ask the are, dog council." Like, the dog is is the council is just the, the dog, dog high the, council. The dog uh, high council, which I love. Who, of course, meet in Central Park. Yeah. Yes. And the one like, of their her source is named Lone Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when they get to this part, I was like, oh shit, they're expanding the mythology like John Wick style in the final <laughs> film. They're like, we have to go consult with the Dog High Council. I have a, I have an in there. <laughs> lone Wolf. So, so I love Lone this Wolf. Is, this is a complete wolf. aside. So Lone okay. Wolf, like, there's a Lone Wolf McQuaid movie. It's a Chuck Norris movie, I believe, if I'm thinking of it correctly. <laughs> and in this movie. He has a bronco and gets buried in a sand quarry, and like he's like knocked out. And so this is the only thing. Like, when I, as soon as I heard Lone, Lone Wolf, this is the only thing I was thinking. <laughs> and so like Chuck Norris is buried alive, and, and he wakes up and he has like a six pack of beer like in his like center console, like pours it all over himself and drinks it, and then just starts gunning it and then drives out of the sand. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> So, oh god. Anyway, that's so, what I was thinking about doing this. <laughs> I love 
I was like, he said, my name is Lone Wolf. And he says it like that. So that like, I was listening. I'm like, did he, I, I think he said wolf. But like, I'm going to listen again he and make sure very... it's not Lone Wolf. Because he looks like a wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has a very uh, Batman-y look. His I'm voice was awesome. Wolf. Yeah. I, I wrote down, he's like, the dog high council has no interest in the problems of other species. <laughs> That's, that's, like, like, that's like a massive like, pot. This guy, he's awesome. Um, so he doesn't want to help them, and so to change his mind, they sing the worst song ever <laughs> written. It sounds like it sounds like a reject, uh, like something that somebody wrote for We Are the World, and that they were like, no, 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 this one sucks, and I, so they instead used it for this. I wish like, I could remember the the melody, but like the lyrics were so terrible. They're like the very first lyric is. If you don't lend a hand when a hand needs lending, who will? <laughs> and that, it's a and lot that's of like, see my hand where my hand be yeah. up. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It's it, a it, lot of who will, who will, who will, and then at the end they all go, I will. Like it's just so ridiculous. Stupid. But it's very like it does sound like kind of like a celebrity telephone song because they all kind of switch and everybody joins in. But the even, lyrics even, were all like, uh, if you don't take a shit when a shit needs taking, <laughs> who will? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't watch a sequel when a sequel <laughs> needs watching, who will? <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> I mean, it was like just like the most basic lyrics. It was like the you know, uh, Stonecutters song from The Simpsons, but not funny. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. But, um, so yeah, even Tiger, who had fainted from seeing a dog, uh, yeah, I thought up, that was hilarious. He woke he up to start up singing in the song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he later is like, yeah. I don't remember meeting any dogs. <laughs> John Delaware's still hanging in strong. Oh there. my god, yeah, he was barely in the movie. Does it make you back. sad? It makes me sad. Yeah. Like he was still doing it. Yeah. yeah, I know. So um, <laughs> Lone Wolf is so moved by the song, he gives them like an obtuse. He says, Clue. I wrote down this this one too. He says, even in the darkest night, you can always find a sign if you know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, like, you can to look. Uh, uh, he, he, says, says, yeah. he tells them that a sign will come sign from, above, from above. And I loved it because Nellie Bree then says, I don't need a lesson in theology. I need a clue. <laughs> and, but then Fievel looks up and sees that there's a lost dog poster with a picture of the stupid poodle. Um, which he then draws on to make sure that it's really the same poodle. <laughs> like, he draws the hair of the poodle they've seen. So, Doesn't like, he right. takes important evidence draws on it to make sure that it's the same poodle. So we basically find out that this poodle was the poodle of the city planner and that's why she had access to sewer maps which allowed the cats to go into the wall. Boo! And then she got, she ran away from her uh, owner and then tried to join the dogs in Central Park and they were like you're just a lap dog, get out of here! And then uh, (laughs) and then she went and uh, took over the cats in the sewers. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. Yeah. And we're supposed to be like... Mm, the reason that she whatever. hates mice and rats is because people have always compared her to mice and rats, which is sure. like... Her name is Mousy. So silly. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Well, you know, you want to get some body shaming in there with your racism. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> um, and so, oh, this whole time Tanya has been like fawning over her boss. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it's only at this point that we like start to realize that, like, Reed and Nellie are in love, but, like, Reed is super mean to Nellie all the time, and it's just... That's how he shows affection. Yeah. <laughs> in that classic 1950s way. Yeah. And then Fievel has no idea what's yeah, going Yeah, Fievel's like, why is he so mean to you? And she's like, oh, you know. And he's like, no, I don't know. And it just I'm, cuts to another I'm scene. Just a kid. Yeah. It's me, Fievel, and I'm the dumbest I've been in any of the movies. Yeah. So, Until the end of the film where he's like a yeah. crazy badass. Oh, my other favorite <laughs> line from Reed is uh, when they're making the newspaper to expose the poodle. Uh, he, the headline is something like, Evil Poodle Sear Suckers Us All. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard this too. He also mentioned that he was a field correspondent during the Civil War. I did not catch that. And I was like, now, is he referencing the American Civil War or some sort of mouse civil war? <laughs> I mean, is like, it, is it, we're probably following each army? Or? I was like, are they aware of the human uh, so wait, so wait, events? What? So it would have been 1908? Yeah, I don't know. The first film took place in 1885. So this oh. one was... So probably like... So... I mean, this. I was like, it could also be 1885. Yeah, I was like, that's true. I was like, do mice live that long? <laughs> I'm sure that they. I'm Maybe. certain that they don't. From 1865 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I thought that was pretty hilarious. 
I, why didn't we get Favel go south and discover the Civil War? Yeah, he could have been in the Civil War. Well, Everybody had to go back in time, I guess. Make that Kickstarter. <laughs> Now's your chance. Favel go south. Five will go Although south. it kind of sounds like a porn parody as well. <laughs> Five goes, goes down. down. <laughs> <Five goes sad. laughs> okay, anyways. So, after having failed to kill Nelly... But guess what? Poodle, Samuel Jackson's still in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the poodle and um, the cats take Papa, Mama, and Yasha away, which is pretty sad. And this is actually, the, despite threats in all these movies, I would say this is the closest that anyone in the family has come to actually being killed by the cats because they were, like, <laughs> about to put them in their mouths. Like, Yeah, that's true. Because Papa was kind of like, we're going to die anyway. Let's antagonize our captors. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, get your filthy cat off. And, 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 and Five Goes West doesn't, I mean, he's in uh, uh, that fat cat's mouth. Like, yeah. and he's, he's like, should I eat him? Like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I could. Yeah, and the yeah, we're always about to die. So. Yeah, no, John, yeah, John Cleese. He's, like he's like he's doing this weird tease thing. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, they send Tiger to go talk to the dogs. I don't know, but yeah, Tiger yeah. has to go get the dogs because he's the fastest. Yeah, he can go all the way to Central Park and back. That's right. And then Five and battle. Tony go yeah. down in the sewers. Yeah, Five electrocutes the poodle. Five old goes down. He straight up electrocutes her, like, which is pretty intense. Oh, yeah, that's true. But it doesn't die. It does, she doesn't kill. She doesn't die. die. Yeah, yeah. She it doesn't, doesn't die. die. <laughs> it doesn't die. Um, it doesn't oh, die. And the way, once the mice uh, escape from their cat captors, they all swim down into the sewer. Yeah. Which, like, do mice swim well? well? I think they do swim. They do. But I, wow, I, 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 no I thought Tony's idea was really bad, because I was like, they're locked in cages. So he turns, like, some release valve, and it starts flooding he the sewer. He floods sewers. the yeah. whole sewer, But yeah. the mice are all in cages. So I'm like, they're just gonna drown now, right? They can't get out of the actually the prequel to 47 meters down. (laughs) (laughs) Like you're you're kind of supposed to believe that they just could have popped out of the cages at any time, but they just didn't because the cats were there. Because as soon as they're like, the "The guards are gone. You know how prisons work. (laughs) Some of the cages floated, but then there were like four cages that were just on the bottom of the sewer. They just reached in. That's that's a good average. Yeah. Can't save everybody. No, they they, they, they <laughs> saved them though. There weren't like, enough lifeboats. I was like, how long did they hold the breath? I don't know. It's a mess. Um, but yeah, so they save all the mice, and then there's still a few cats chasing Five all around mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, up in the uh, newspaper because they're like chasing them around with the with the um, the monster or whatever. And uh, what? Ha- oh yeah, Reed. And Nelly launched like a grenade yes. out of the out of this crazy pneumatic tube thing that they have, and it blows up. What were they pouring in there? Like uh, lamp oil or something? I missed that whole part. I have no memory of what you're talking about right now. What? <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I have no idea what they're pouring they're, in there. Like, they're dumping. Like, it looks like they're dumping like red. I don't know some red liquid into the yeah. pneumatic tube, and then they're like, "Wait for it, wait for it." And then when the monster's right in front of them, like Reed. Hits the on button and it launches the tube and it ex- explodes. The... I, don't, I don't know why. I think in my mind I was like, "Oh, it's the probably monster. popcorn oil," but like for no reason. <laughs> it seemed like it was like lamp oil or yeah. something. Or but ink, um, maybe. No. But yeah, so it totally explodes, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, this whole time I was like, "Oh man, the dogs are gonna come and do something awesome," but then the dogs threw up just to be like, "Woof woof," and they chase away like two cats, and then and then uh, our job is done yeah, pretty here. much. You're like, welcome. <laughs> yeah, we did it. I was like, that was kind of lame. So, I guess uh, at some point, Reed saved Nellie's life, and so they, like, express their love to each other at the end, and then Tanya is, like, yeah, heartbroken, Reed, Reed and, but it's, like, played for laughs, and, like, not, you know, she's, like, devastated, and what? she, like, she's got to kick Tanya. <laughs> yeah. show her, like, yeah, Reed is like, I'm crazy about you, you know, and you, they, you, like, pan to the side, and they show, while this conversation's happening, Tanya in the background, like, Horrified look like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, it's so sad. And they just, they're like, oh, well, too bad for that. Like, she's a depressed teenager. Ha ha, you know, like, it just, And wow. Fable goes, I still don't get it. Because yeah. like <laughs> someone's like, is she going to be okay? And he's like, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> She's like crying on the ground. I mean, <laughs> like in any other movie, like to do respect to the character, they would have had her like meet a cute boy at the end and have hope, or like nope. you know get together not, with Tony. Not, or something. not these movies and not Tanya. Yeah, 
<laughs> Never Tanya. Tanya, Tanya is Don't still help. played by Lacey Chabert, yeah. who's Meg, so I guess it just makes sense. But <laughs> um, So I guess the message of this one was that Fievel was supposed post to embrace his fear and that sometimes fear is good because it keeps you from doing stupid things. Yeah, which, and uh, which is which is a lesson that he should have learned in the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I just didn't understand like Fievel having these nightmares and being scared of everything was completely inconsistent to me from the other three movies. He has he has the shining. What drove him <laughs> in the other three movies was being stupidly unafraid of everything. Yeah. Especially in that second movie. He wasn't afraid at all when the yeah. villains were holding him and threatening to kill him. So it just seemed like such a complete turn that he's now this like scary cat. I think like cat. he went through all these like horrible situations that just finally caught up with him. Like he got a little bit older in this movie and he's like He's like, man, I've seen some shit. He, no, he, he no, started he, freaking out. He, about, he got like he got I mean, anxiety because because, because, yeah. because he didn't feel like any of his actions had consequences because every adventure he went on seemed to magically disappear the next yeah, day. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, my, my actions are meaningless. So this time he learns to be less reckless, I guess. Tony doesn't really. I mean, Tony has grown. He was not a horn dog at all in this movie. That aspect of his character was completely gone. He never was Just like no time for humana it. humana on like Nelly. He wasn't looking at any girl. He was trying to get those dollars dollar bills yeah he just <laughs> wanted to advance his career and instead of you know be promoted to reporter instead of newsboy which was a big change so, for him. so wait so tanya also got fucked over because like all she wanted to do was do things with nelly and then five gets sent out on all the things yeah she's <laughs> yeah. like the secretary basically. and then she just like stays back at the newspaper yeah, but she's also like in love with that guy so she wanted well, to she be was around his him assistant. yeah, yeah so. it was yeah. So oh like, uh, daily. yeah, we, <laughs> Tiger really <laughs> was barely in the movie and didn't really do anything of consequence. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, Dom DeLuise had to like drive to Burbank for thirty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> to, um, to do his role for this movie. So, so from the last movie, uh, Philip Glasser, who played Fievel, and Lacey Chabert as Tanya were back. Um, What's her face was back as Tony to Pony, um, and then. Um, the dad was back and Don DeLuise was back. But yeah. Mama changed actresses between the third and fourth movie and, like, in her one scene in the beginning was significantly more, like, using Yiddish uh, uh, euphemisms yeah. and, like, just going over the top. <sighs> uh, so I don't even remember what she was saying. I, I she was the, saying, like, boobala a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. believe the direction in the booth was, hey, let's really lean into this Jewish stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just really go for, for it. it. Which yeah. maybe the previous actress didn't want to do, or and so, <laughs> she and, but this actress had it. no qualms, so yeah. I was like, sure. Oh, uh, yeah, so we 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 get to the final, uh, you know, final uh, scene where we get to see, like, uh, you know, since this is the last film, like, here's mm -hmm. this is where we leave the characters, and they're just like out picnicking on the beach. Uh, Tanya is still like bummed about, you know, not having Reed. Fievel is <laughs> playing her baby. Tanya's Ta 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 <laughs> thinking about a, a career in, in nursing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her, fit, her fifth career change. <laughs> yeah. We're like, they're all just kind of hanging out. We learn uh, very briefly that, like, uh, the Mount... What is it? Musse? Madame Musse. M Madame oh, Musse. Right. They, they like... Uh, oh, they gave her back to her. Yeah, they, the, do her. the dog council yeah. rules on her fate. Yeah. And they're like, we <laughs> could kill you. But... but, but we're going to do the exact same fate that happened to John Cleese's character yes. <laughs> yeah. in the second movie. We're going to give you back to your original owner. Yeah. And we have this whole long conversation with the humans for a second. Which and is... they, they managed to do it without somebody saying pussy ten times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> so, yeah, for these animals, the fate worse than death is just being... Uh, Owned by an ex, obese ex, woman, ex, overly ex, affectionate obese women are the fate to worse the, than to death. The human world, yeah, yeah. And then we, uh, the family, kind of like turns around, and we we end on Fievel passed out, dreaming of future sequels, dreaming <laughs> of going west, yeah. <laughs> and then it kind of like fades out on the Statue of yeah, Liberty, yeah. And we all of a sudden bring up the imagery of the Statue of Liberty, which was not shown yes. at all in this movie, barely in the yeah. last movie, and we're like. This is the thing we need to show. The if Statue you look of very closely, you can see Henri. Oh so yeah, Henri. Yeah. Yeah. Henri. yeah. So that's that's the last image of the of the series, you guys. Yeah. Um. So good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh man, I, I, it's. Yeah, so what's everyone's overall thoughts? We've we reached the end. We've reached the end. I think Four that, episodes, uh, we've done it. I'm surprised at how much it kept the themes... Yeah. From the first one, over over all of them. Yeah. I think that, that I actually might agree that the second one might be the worst one. 
You come around to my side? I, okay. I, yes. No, I think I actually like this one better than the last one. I do too. Because it was le- they were like they weren't trying so hard to be like super preachy about like like um union issues and all this like no, really obvious like, stuff. This one was kind of just like a, more of a goofy like it's we, it's where weird where, like, where, 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 where it could have it could have been like it had a better encapsulation of what made the first one great yeah and and kind of still addressed those themes and had better music and I think, like I I, I I take that back the 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 treasure of Manhattan is the worst yeah one. that one's but, but, then, but I like that this I, I might like this one better than Final Ghost Wars I don't know if I would, I would still go one two four three yeah because I, I think this one had really good character like Nelly Nelly Marie is a really good new character and then I yeah. I, I like the hide the dog well and, and and it had <laughs> And it had a plot that, that went straight forward and, and yeah. didn't yeah. have any weird, like, oh, well, like, that person's, like, it didn't have any weird, like, that person's actually this type of animal. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought for sure, because they kept calling that dog a rat. I was right. like, is it going to be a rat again? Yeah, we but didn't even talk about how, like, nuts. dogs make a big return here. Yeah. There yeah. were no dogs in the previous film. I wrote down uh, one, four, three, two as far, like, the, the order, like... Yikes. I have two. I still think two is the worst one out of all of them. It just yeah. said nothing to me. Like so. Uh. But I, I think overall, like it is, it, they're they're interesting in that they they do the, the thing that we loved about the first one is is it kind of has this fable brothers Grimm feel to it, and but it's an updated American version of that. It had you know this pageantry and and the, the sea is a demon and and you know this this extended stuff and while still dealing with workhouses and and the hardships of the american experience and i think that that what you find is is they try to explore those themes across these other movies is that you get into these really these areas that you have to be sensitive to and mm-hmm. you can see how they've gotten so much better with like films that, like moana or things where like they're 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 doing research and actually studying it, yeah. where like th- these movies run into s- their their hearts in the right place, where they want to tell an authentic melting pot story, and they think that the multiculturalism is a part of that story, and they they on paper feel like that they're executing that. But it's four white dudes in a writer's room being yeah. like, yeah, the Loch Ness Monster. And like, we've moved on from yeah. having char- uh, Scottish characters called Mr. Bagpipes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, so like, the heart's in the right place, but like the execution of it is just not great. That's and, why I'm like, I can't put these ones above two because yeah. the animation is just not good. And it's not. <laughs> it's not. But the plot. Two, but two just two has no plot. Two is plot. pretty. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, and okay. it's just like a fun kids movie. No, <laughs> I, like I just goofy, can't forgive the like no, no story, no message. Like, and it has a way better, it's like better villain, better villain. But yeah, probably my favorite like villain. John Cleese is yeah. really fun in that movie. Yeah, <sighs> man, his plan makes no fucking sense. I but, just yeah, the second yeah. one I just did not like at all. But um, well, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Our listeners, I just read an email yeah, yeah, yeah. from Steve from Michigan. He says, "Oh my <laughs> God, that is, is the best such movie. a lie!" Yeah, uh, two is the best. Keep, movie. Listeners, keep your eyes peeled for the Twitter poll where we can all prove he is wrong. Oh my God! Uh, <laughs> okay, but you can only vote if you watched all four of them recently, which will have yeah, no votes yeah, except for just, us. Just tweet all your proof at no, you know, everyone's watching along with us. They'll have watched. I'm sure they are watching along. Uh, um, so I would have said, like, I mean, I think kind of like if if we could like guess as to what we would have wanted to see in sequels instead of these sequels like if west had been a little bit better and actually had some sort of message then i would have liked them to continue moving which i guess is kind of sucks for them but you could have continued to explore the immigrant or just even the um Migrants. Five goes Pacific. Migrants. Yeah, I was going to say Five surfing. Yeah. yeah. Mig- <laughs> the immigrant or migrant experiences in America instead of just going back to New York and, like, and then exploring. I mean, that, it it would have, I was going to say, it would have made like no sense timeline wise, but what if they would have just moved like, Fival and their family up through di- different like historic periods in the U.S. Like instead of just staying in this. No, like, I, I agree with that, and I think that, that interestingly, as much as I don't feel like that any of these. Excuse me. Any of these movies are essential. Right. That that well, yeah. that that's not to say that I wouldn't want to see more movies in this vein. I think that mm-hmm. there are stories that you can tell with this kind of blueprint of of kind of like what you're saying. Like you could do it at different times. You could yeah. do it with these different themes. Yeah. It's not turning a blind eye. Ultimately, I think that's a good thing to kind of some of the darker things in American history. And there are great stories that that kids 
can learn from that that are that will make good children's movies. That being said, that's why the three sequels are all frustrating in the same way, <laughs> and that they don't. None of them really do that. Yeah, I, I do like. I mean, one of the things that I give Five Goes West over the other ones too is like that. At least they continued the story. Yes. They didn't just like. Hit the boop, reset button and like well, I still send think, it back I to still New York think that's, for no that that's one of the the most egregious sin. Like I, I I'm gonna call that like the, the the Manhattan Island paradox or something right. like that. But like like when they when they just erase something that yeah. happened in the last movie for no All that fucking work reason. Those people did. Yeah, the it same was people. A dream. Uh, it was not the same people. The, between the third and fourth, it was. No, so we're, it was talking about, we're, talking, we're talking about, we're talking about the third. Yeah. Yeah. The third, no, the third, the third one just being like, eh, fuck all that That movie noise. didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and in some articles that I saw before we even started watching these, it, it um, said that the third and fourth movie were prequels to Goes West, which I don't think is true, but some people have read it that way. Yeah, I mean, I, guess. I, I wouldn't read it that way if he He's, says he, he says dream. verbatim, I had a dream that no, we're I in know. the Wild West. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree they're not prequels, but some people choose to see it that way because they refuse to believe that two <laughs> was a dream. Um, so, I don't yeah. know, where are we... Kind of fall overall. Did anyone have overall thoughts? I had fun. I mean, I had fun because I had never seen the uh, the final two movies. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I guess I wasn't really expecting much, but they were they were like I didn't like them, but they were better than I thought they would be. Yeah, I, I mean, they kind of reminded me just been, more of a TV like, episode. They could have been like really bad. They could have been way worse. My expectation was for them to throw it out the window, get, kind of do more down the path of what Five Goes West did. Where it just feels like wacky crazy yeah. and, and really just lose the themes. It didn't go full, it's full Looney Tunes. And so like it, it's, it is interesting that despite all their failings, they were staying true to the mold of what that first movie was. And what the idea of an American yeah. tale as a franchise could be to its detriment. Yeah. But, but <laughs> I do give it credit. I mean, there's going to be movies that we're going to watch that are going to feel like that they don't even belong in the same yeah. franchise yeah. together. And so, all of these absolutely do. Yeah, and with this, with all the movies, maybe not two, but with most of them, they're at least trying to say something. Whether you agree with it or not, there's a story and they're saying something. Like, what we get, and this is what, what Universal was putting out, even on their direct-to-video things at that time. What Universal Animation is doing now, having acquired Illumination, like, I saw Minions, I saw Despicable Me 3, and they were horrible. They said <laughs> nothing. Fart jokes, Minion things, you know, butts. Hey, like, there's nothing wrong with so fart joke movies. movies. So many nothing wrong butts. with fart joke movies. That's fine. <laughs> but but I, that being said, I did not see it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, saw, I. I recently <laughs> saw the you third Despicable to, Me, no, and I was enraged, because that movie just said absolutely nothing. These movies at least try to say something, whether or not you agree or feel they did it effectively, they at least had some ambition, and I have to give them credit for that. You know, I I, I just would rather watch any of these movies than see Despicable Me three again. Oof. I mean, I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I think this uh, kind of children's entertainment I just feel is more valuable than. No story. Yeah. I you still want those kids to know Mr. Haggis. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I still don't think, like... Mr. Haggis aside, like, the journalism <laughs> and the investigation... Mr. Haggis, Haggis aside. aside. <laughs> That's my new favorite segue. You know, the whole thing about facing your fears and, I, you know... I still think, like, uh, for this whole thing, like, you don't get anything more out of the sequels than you do out of the first film. Yes. No. Show your if you're gonna show your kids or watch it with people, watch the first movie and then stop. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then hit that eject button, go into something else that's quality. Yeah. The uh, first one is Unless a you are in really, mind. really into labor disputes or really, really into journalism, yeah. then watch the fourth one. Or fake towns. Fake towns. Or walls. <laughs> or walls. You like to know how walls work? If you want to build that wall, watch the first All of them do have like some weird stingy, steampunky gizmo. The mice the mice march around with that's giant true. forks yeah. as their weapons. I don't really know what that's about. Although, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, like I want to see, like, I would, if they, they announced right now, they're like, we're doing a story about Reed Daly's time in the Mouse Civil War as a reporter. I'd be like, fuck, I want to see that. <laughs> yeah? Everyone else is like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Who's Reed Daly? <laughs> He's a See, mouse who's based off a horrible pun. <laughs> yeah. It was really made for TV movies so, that was released in Germany. Yeah. Do you guys remember, like, a few years ago when Herman Cain referenced that song from the Pokemon movie? No. Okay, anyways. But how great would it be if Donald Trump, like, used the fourth American Tale movie oh as God. evidence, like, for the wall? 
He's like, you gotta get the facts. He, 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 he wouldn't, he was like, there wasn't a song in there called Get the Facts. What are you talking about? <laughs> As we play the YouTube videos of like, here's the song, Donald. Yes. The song. <laughs> we should cover that song and then sell it to whoever runs against Donald I think he was saying, get the fox. Like, get the fox. Like the car fox. <laughs> the car fox. <laughs> Do a better Show role. me the car fox. <laughs> Show me the car <laughs> fox. <laughs> Uh, oh god, okay, we should probably fox. end this. Alright, um, so let's let's wrap this up. Uh yeah, so uh we've reached the end of this franchise. Thank you guys for listening. Um, you know, we still haven't decided what we're doing next, but if you guys have any suggestions, shoot us an email at sequelrights at gmail.com. Yes, you can also like us on Facebook and leave your comments there at facebook.com slash sequelrights. Or at us uh, on Twitter <laughs> at Sequel Rights and tell me how wrong I am. And make for sure you not uh, liking. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get that poll up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and make sure you guys uh, subscribe on iTunes or wherever you uh, wherever podcasts are sold. Wherever you can. <laughs> yeah, rate, rate, review, subscribe. Um, we want to do some thank yous, right? Oh yeah, um, we got a. We've been forgetting to thank a couple people. Um, the opening music comes from my brother Jordan Camps. And, uh, is that it? I guess so, yeah. That's We'd it. like to thank you, Jordan! Yay. Thanks, Jordan! The music is dope! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All thanks right. guys, we'll see you at the next one. Bye! Bye!